Uh, so w- with you and your daughter, though, like, was there a particular moment where she realized, like, what dad was or has she always just like completely understood and is it ever weird for her because she's so I'm, I'm assuming like younger kids they tend to gravitate towards younger artists so like what is her perspective of your place in the game well when she was growing when she was growing up she actually didn't care i want to say and um she, she 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 didn't care to the point where it was like a nonchalant thing for her like you know we'll be out and people will be asking to take pictures and she'll and she'll just ask me like in a plain voice like why do you, why people keep wanting to take pictures with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, totally. And, you know, and I don't want to sound like I'm trying to bolster with it. I'm like, well, dad's a like an entertainer, you know what I mean? She was like, oh, you know, that well, that's cool. And she was like, you know what I'm saying? So it, it didn't really matter to her. Uh-huh. You feel me? Even right now, uh, she has more YouTube uh, subscribers than I do. Really? Yes. Wait, how old is she? She's 12. She's 12 and she's just making YouTube videos or is she actually putting time into it or? Well, actually she wants to, uh, she wants to venture off into being a YouTube sensation or whatever. Okay. You know, she told me like, she like she likes wearing, like she likes cats. You feel me? She really loves cats and dogs. So she wants to like this cat head that she wants to put on her head and she wants to like do daily things with that on and watch and let people watch her doing her daily things. So. I'm going to support that. Oh, no, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I was actually, I had that conversation with my girl the other day, though, because she was trying to get me to do a dorky-ass TikTok dancing and shit. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of being hesitant. I'm kind of like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. She's like, she made a really good point. She's like, you're going to do it for the kid, right? Like, once we have the kid, you're going to have to be a goofy-ass dad, and you're not going to say no to the TikTok, right? I'm like, yeah, I guess, you know, I'll do some go- goofy-ass shit for my kid. And then I was like, man, that's, that, that, that must be how this happens, is that you could have a dude who takes himself a little seriously, but as soon as his girl and his daughter or his whatever want to make a TikTok, boom, you're in the game. You're in the game. I mean, well, it's, it's, well, you know, I like adapting to whatever is, like, current, too, also. You feel what I'm saying? So that's, that's a lot. That's, that goes back to, like, how, how I rhyme or how I rap, you know what mm. I mean, and what I talk about and what I choose to glorify in my lyrics. You feel what I'm saying? I think that I I do that from like being, you know, up on whatever going on in the street. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Like, you know what I mean? You gotta keep, like, you gotta keep if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna I think if you wanna last, like you can always be t- at the top. You feel me? But once you go down, it, it, it depends on what you do while you're not hot. Mm. You feel me? What you do while you're not hot is go back to where it started. You feel me? You go to the streets, you you hand to hand, you tell people this. You show them your swag. You spit a couple of bars. You feel me? You let them see the sauce. You feel what I'm saying? You can't even barbecue without calling me. I got all the sauce. You know what I'm <laughs> Yeah, no, hundred percent. And it's like that's actually one thing I was thinking though over the last couple of days of listening to a lot of your old shit is like there's like a certain attitude that you had that was way ahead of the game that was like you know you're talking about selling dope, but you're still saying funny, creative, goofy sort of stuff about your lifestyle and that that's something that seems very commonplace in rap now yeah. it was not th- there's a different vibe that wasn't necessarily there and i think that's a lot of what made you stand out so much is that like oh this is a dude who maybe he's coming out from the same era as ti and jeezy and gucci etc but you had mm-hmm. way more of a sense of humor about it yeah I, it, it, i'm glad you noticed that i mean like that's kind of like what i want to give off you know what i mean like it's a lot of stuff that we go through. It's a lot of stuff that I've been through in my life that that really, that's really bad. You mm-hmm. feel me? So when I did decide to start writing lyrics, I wanted to have a sense of humor about it. You know what I mean? I wanted to talk about things that really people made fun of me about. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And 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 I just took it and twisted it. You feel what I'm saying? So when I did spit like how you was talking about, I I did it like. It came from a it came from a, a real good place in my heart. You dig what I'm saying? Mm, yeah, because nowadays it's like people kind of maybe understand that the the name of the game is to sort of describe the things in our life in the most creative or interesting way. But at that yeah. time, you know, I never heard somebody compare their car to a fucking fruitopia. You know, <laughs> and and that just that that was like mind blowing to us at the time. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, most of the stuff I rapped about, I didn't have as a child. 
mm-hmm. like food, cars, you know what I'm saying, money, and you know what I mean? Well, I always had bitches, but the stuff I really, really rapped about, I really didn't have. Like, everybody was like, why you mix food into your car? I was like, because like I was short of food and we didn't have a car. So in my in my mind, I dreamed and thought about stuff. Like, I fantasized about 30-inch rims on a, a Escalade road goal, you feel me? Right. Some $55 right. rims, you feel me? You'll never see a truck like this again, you feel me? Yeah, Pearl, Pearl Kellac truck, rose gold 30s, rose gold everything, dough knobs, grill, you know what I mean? You feel what I'm saying? Definitely. So that's that's how I, I pictured life when I was broke. Right. No, yeah, and that's like that that's a lot of the same energy that I felt like when you, you have a lot of like SoundCloud rappers and shit like that, is that they very much like get the energy that you were coming with at that time that of you know, you, you could still sound tough or hard or whatever while also being kind of fun and creative and talking about shit in an interesting way, you know? Yeah, I'm glad you keep that. Hundred <laughs> percent. And also I think the big thing too is that it's like, you know, a lot at the time when you came out too, a lot of people didn't want to give somebody credit for being lyrical unless they were I don't know, conscious, more like talking about super serious shit or, or people would give somebody a pass from somebody from New York who was just sort of putting words together, talking about a bunch of gangster shit. But then nobody wanted to put like nobody wanted to ever consider Gucci lyrical. When when I look at Gucci, I'm like, bro, a lot of the shit he was doing early on was incredible, like absolutely mind blowing. And people really didn't want to put Southern rappers in that box of, of, of being, you know, talented wordsmiths. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and it's funny you said that because like me and me and Gucci talk all the time and like when he did come out, Shouter was like one of the, you feel me, like one of the dark skinned cats from my, you know, it's like I, I peeked it out because how um, consistent he was with what he was doing and, and talking about real life things. You feel what I'm saying? I'm talking about, it was almost like I was looking in the mirror when I saw Gucci. You feel what I'm saying? Like, shout at me and shout at just alike. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. And, but he was like turned up like a couple of degrees higher than I was for the hustling. You feel what I'm saying? Because like, shout at real street. And, but at the same time, uh, and, and, and what I do admire about Gucci, um, since you brought that up, is the fact that he he did that and then turned around and did it even better. You mm. feel what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I know. Th- that is a weird thing to think about is that like the audience... I mean, man, the audience are so addicted to negativity that it's mm-hmm. kind of like if you're somebody like you who was never like blatantly like fucked up publicly or whatever, that it's like sometimes it, it's less for them to grab onto with Gucci. They got to see this like this crazy story of him like being all fucked up and then coming out of it as a, as a better person. And a lot of times people love that fucking that sort of narrative. Yeah. I mean, well, I'll say this. I love the old Gucci, but I'm, <laughs> I'm inspired by the new Gucci. Right. You feel me? Yeah. I mean, it could be hard to still be in your creative zone, in your space, even when you are at a point in life where you've sort of gotten rid of a lot of your bad habits. Yeah. I mean, what all of you know, it's, it, it ain't nothing wrong with growing. You feel what I'm saying? Like, um, one of the most consistent things on earth is change. Mm. Um, you know, so... And I'm all about my change, like literally. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So it it, it 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 makes me feel good to see a person transform from something that was made a made a made a, a positive out of, of a, ne- a negative. Hundred mm, percent. So when you when you're looking at a young artist and you see, you know, a lot of the young artists, they're very much like they just want to present an image of them being dangerous, whether it's them, you know, showing themselves a lot of drugs, them showing themselves a lot of guns, showing themselves doing all kinds of crazy shit on social media and stuff. Where does your mind go when you see an artist in that position? Because you sort of know that a lot of those things might be part of why the audience is so interested in them. But then at the same time, you know what that's going to be like for them in the long run in terms of like, oh, maybe you, you shouldn't be having guns in your video this aggressively because it's just going to make you a target to the cops and whatnot. Like, wh- wh- what do you say to those kind of kids and what's your thought process on that? I mean, um, well, I'm from Atlanta. Like, everybody got strap on. <laughs> True. Like, like it, it, it almost looked good with the outfit. If I, if you can say like, it's like a Gucci but, belt, yeah. Yeah, you feel me? So, but, but, a lot of a lot of people 
get it misunderstood when they see uh, a young a young nigga go up on Instagram. He got the strap on him. You feel what I'm saying? And goddamn, when he, when I got big fat on me, shawty, you feel me? I'm smacking all that, man. We was, man, hey, man, headshots, all that, man. We taking them off over him. Wiping nigga nose over here, you feel me? Hmm. In reality, you, the, the guy that you're really impressed by hasn't even really used this gun hmm. before. You feel me? It, like, he got it on him, but I don't think shawty uh, perform how, like, how a sniper really would. You feel what I'm saying? Like in the in the in the heat in the heat of the moment, you'll probably shoot your goddamn self. You feel what I'm saying? So mm. I think that if you once you start putting yourself toward the guns and the and hanging them out and yeah, man, we strapped up. You feel me? You drawing, you're gonna have to use it. Uh, obviously, like uh, eventually, mm. I want to say, like you feel what I'm saying. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't glorify guns in your video. You feel me? I wouldn't glorify. Uh, I wouldn't gl- I wouldn't glorify it to the point where it was making a uh making a um like letting the people let, letting the people know oh I'm strapped up I shoot you in the face I'll glorify it to the point where, like I'm I'm protecting what I have mm. you feel what I'm saying I'm strapped up I ain't trying to kill you but I, you feel me but I got this gun on me because I'm trying to protect what I have that's that's it you feel me that's what I would promote I wouldn't promote yeah flashing the gun you know what I mean I, mean, I splat one of y'all you feel I will splat one of y'all niggas but I don't want to. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I would I wouldn't promote I wouldn't promote that in the in the wrong way. You feel me? Um and what I have to say about the youth that's probably headed that way, um it, you know, what you put in is what you get out. You feel me? If you if you wanna if you wanna be a shootout person, if you wanna, you know what I'm saying, say you've got a, a hundred guns, eventually you're gonna have to shoot out and you know what I mean, show somebody those hundred guns. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So don't just get it misconstrued thinking that you can just flash this shit and it's a hundred people looking at you on Instagram and thirty of them don't like you and willing to try you about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we wanna test that nigga. You feel me? No, yeah, that's that's <laughs> That's kind of crazy. It's, it's so true, though. A lot of people really are like showing guns off on social media and just fingers crossed that they're never going to have to do anything with it. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say so much finger crossed. They 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 be doing it like without thinking. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? It be a, it be a person watching that shit. It be niggas that be watching Instagram with niggas with straps on. Like, as soon as I see that nigga, I'm gonna make that nigga you that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Jay Cog, and I don't even like it. If I see him, someone, I'm gonna tell y'all the jaw and everything. You feel me? So, if whatever you promote, that's why that goes back to when you saying I was just rapping about humor. You feel me? That's why I rap the way I rap. I'm not a shoot 'em up, bang bang. You know what I mean? Dump it out, rapper. But I'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's not my aim. I could tell you, I've been performing. I did over. I think I done done over twenty thousand shows, man. Over wow, my- really? in my career holy shit I, i've never got to fight I've really never never nobody's ever touched me in the club like you feel me nobody's ever harmed me or did well one time i got hit with some water but that was it <laughs> <laughs> some water you got lucky that's crazy that's that feels like that's what happens to a lot of people like very early on in their career is that they get tested in some environment they get booked for some show at some random place down south and they think they could just fly in and be with one homie and then they they figure it out real quick that that actually if you're putting a certain image out there, and even if you ain't putting a certain image out there, there's a lot of people that are gonna want to find out what you're really on. Yeah, and that you know what I mean, and and that goes to that goes. I, I cater like anytime I'm, I fly into any city, doing any show anywhere, I always cater to my audience. I cater to the people in the town. Let them know that I come bearing gifts. Mm. I have no quarrel with you. You feel what I'm saying? Like you feel what I'm saying? Because I'm not home. Right. If I did a show. I'll be more aggressive, more nonchalant, more cocky. You feel what I'm saying? I'll Definitely. be like, oh, I'm at home. And I expect for you to be that in your town and rip your city the same way. But when I'm ever out, I always, I pay homage to who's ever been getting money in the city, whatever big drug dealer. Man, listen, take pictures out, sit down, eat with you. You feel what I'm saying? Right. I know how to, I, I adapt real good. 
But that's interesting because there is that conversation that we hear in rap uh, from time to time about like checking in. Like, should should rappers check in? Is it smart to check in? I mean, it's kind of different from somebody like you where you're coming with like a a built-in level of respect. So it's not like you're some young rapper who's about to like just show up in a city and have real gangbangers like trying to extort them or get something out of them. Um, But would would you recommend that like the average young rapper just stay like far away from the street shit as much as possible or do what you're saying and sort of try to show your respect and show show that you care or that you're trying to be a respectful part of the culture. Of course, show, show that you have respect and that you care and trying to be a respectful part of the culture. That's on top. You feel me? But uh, as far as far as uh, checking in, I think that that's it. That's that's. I think that's a necessary thing. Hmm. Not not checking in to the point where. Oh, nigga, when you land here, nigga, you better come holler at me. If you don't, you're going to get shot. Not that, like, not that check-in. It's checking in, like, if I fly to Cali, I'm hot, I call Big U and say I'm on the way. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? I call Big U, say I'm on the way. Fly to Cali, shit laid out. I call game, I'm on the way. Shit laid out. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When I get there, I'm already covered. These, this they land. Mm. You feel me? Just like I said, it, when, when I'm in my city, I'm popping out. I got shit going on. This how I act in my city. So when I fly with to their city... This how they kick it. Like I kick it in my city. They got me covered. You feel what I'm saying? So it's a, it's almost like, don't check in, but let motherfuckers that care about you know you're there. Mm. Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.